Introducing the Poet Life Podcast. Go check it out today on your favorite platforms, including iTunes, Apple Music, and the website, thepoetlife.com. Find a way. Find a way. Peace, everybody. What's going on? It's another episode of the Poet Life Podcast. I'm J-Rod D. And my good brother, Christoph Jenkins, with your host. Yep. We have a special guest today. We're talking about uplifting the poetry community and building the poetry industry. And this right here is taking the building the poetry industry to a whole other level. We have Miss Stephanie Denning, the lead contributor for Forbes.com. And we're going to talk about if poetry has a place in business. And a lot of that comes to come back to what we were talking about earlier with a lot of guests before and what they did, their business moves, how they made them, them things shake. But now we're going to have actual uh, contributors of Forbes.com, a lot of money moves, a lot of money talk when it comes to Forbes. So you keep that in mind as we go through the conversation. So we have, again, Ms. Stephanie Denning on the Poor Life Podcast. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks for having me. Well, no Thank problem. you. Thank you for coming on. Definitely. Um, real quick, though, if, let me start, because when you think of Forbes, when I think of Forbes, I think of business automatically. I think with the Forbes list and how many people have been on there and, you know, how many artists have sold all this money and how record sales, everything like that, how, that's on Forbes. When it comes to actual poetry, or when it comes to it's just what what you do, because Forbes.com, um, Forbes magazine, then it's Forbes. So can you, can you expound upon on what is that that you do with Forbes.com as the lead contributor? Yeah, I am. Um, you know, I I write as a as a contributor for Forbes, but I I also work as a management consultant um, as well. So I do kind of have parallel tracks, and I would say, um, you know, I probably do what a lot of people do who are in the creative community where I have. Uh, one job, which probably funds and foots a lot of the bill. But on the other hand, I moonlight um, much more in the creative field in terms of writing. I mean, I, I write for Forbes as a contributor, but I also do a lot of fiction writing on the side. And um, and for me, I think, you know, I, I think it's a really great outlet to kind of um, talk about a lot of the issues that I think you guys are surfacing here um, that, that don't necessarily, I think, get the airspace that it deserves, uh, specifically around poetry. Um, you know, poetry, I think, in my experience, anyway, I work with a lot of CEOs, for example, in my day job as a consultant. I would say um, it probably would be fair to say that less than 10% probably read, uh, you know, complex type of um, both poetry and fiction on a regular basis. And I think that's the issue that I really wanted to get at um, in this particular article. Okay. Okay. So we have poetry and just, just your overall view. Um, do you think it has a space in the business world? And if so, how can it fit in the business world? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, <laughs> I'm still trying to sort it out. So if you yeah. guys have answers, you tell me. <laughs> but uh, well, I mean, but we, um, we've been talking about it a lot. You know, just trying to get some ideas flowing because um every every guest that we had has had a, um incredible input as far as their perspective. So that's why we're asking the question to you as well. Yeah, and I think you know, I mean, my answer to that would be, I think, twofold in a sense. I think there's there's one element which is, does poetry have a place in the business setting? And I think, um, you know, based on my experience in terms of what I see, I think that um, not enough leaders actually read poetry um, or, or any kind of creative field. And I think the ones that do are the ones that I find, um, you know, this is what I say in the article, too, is I think it really pushes the field forward as opposed to, I think, just getting the basics right is that you're just kind of like staying afloat. Um, you know, I think a great example is it's it's one that everyone cites, but I think Obama is a terrific example of someone who, I mean, he is someone who he reads all the all the kind of like uh, policy wonk type books, but on on the plus side, he also reads poetry and fiction, and I think that really mm-hmm. adds kind of like an emotional, uh, visceral level um, to his policy making. You know, I mean, he releases, for example, the, his favorite books, favorite poetry. Um, like some poetry is on that every year. And I think I think that just adds a dimension to to his um, just his success that that others don't really get because they they just don't go into that type of field. So um, there is one other thing that I will that I will say, though, I think that's their poetry has a place in business. But I think there's a separate discussion as well is uh, can you make poetry commercial? Um, and I think, you know, the answer most people would say is no. But I think that's wrong. I think it's just the, the approach that most people have to poetry today is too academic. Um, it doesn't resonate right. with the masses. And I'm very against this philosophy generally. I mean, I think that reaching the masses with poetry or any kind of creative field should be the purpose. I mean, you should be moving people um, emotionally yes. in that respect. So 
I think there. Are, anyway, I think it's a, it's kind of a two two different arguments. But. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Um, because one of the things that comes to mind mm -hmm. is when it comes to poetry and just you mentioned Obama. That's good because um, it, it brings the human aspect. When when I think of leadership and what what leaders read and what they're they're into, yeah. Um, oftentimes they have like the the help books. They have like the Machiavellis. They have all these. Yeah. Like that. The forty laws of power. Uh, I know all the stuff. Rather they have like some poetry <laughs> or something that's more humane that can reach on a more personal, interpersonal level. Um, yeah. So that's why I feel like that's what poetry can step in and just be the heartbeat. You know, what I'm saying to what people are trying to do and kind of kind of give that spirit and energy to them. Um, and try, yeah, try I completely agree. Yeah, sure, I completely sure. agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, think I think the way. Sorry. No, I said no. I said Crystal. What do you thought? Yeah, yeah, but, but I, the one thing I just wanted to say is like when you say it's the heartbeat, I mean, I think that that's absolutely true, right? And I think that that is really what's missing. Like you read the, what if, the 48 laws, or I forget the power or whatever it is, or uh, the one with like the habits of highly affected people. And you know, I'm sure that's great in a lot of ways, but that's not gonna give heart, I think, to anything that you're doing. So from a leadership perspective, absolutely agree. I think that's uh, it's critical. Yeah, I was, um, I was thinking, when it comes to the actual poet, right? Um, if there is room for public speaking and, and business, there's room for poetry. You know, um, you have, we spoke about Barack Obama. I can't remember what setting he was in. I think he was at a funeral. Um, and then he just starts sing, singing a, a gospel song, right? And, and, it's almost the same difference where that could be incorporated. A poem could have been incorporated in that setting, but at the same thing, at the same time, if there is someone's retirement, um, poetry would been would have been um, a great insert into that setting as well. Um, even with uh, a corporate conference, because it's it's words one. Uh, but it's creatively presented. And in business, most businesses are trying to find creative ways to say things, present things, um, whether it's on social media. Um, and, 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 and we're talking about engagement and what better way to engage people is to invoke emotion. And poetry is one way to do that. You know, so I, I, I was just thinking in that realm, there's so many like branches that you can, and lanes that you can go in as it relates to business and poetry. And so it really depends on what, uh, how you're asking it, if you will, you know, whether it has a place in business. So that, that's kind of how my mind went, where, where yeah. my mind went. Yeah, do you think it's like, it's like a, cause I always think maybe it's, um, cause we had a conversation with Bianca Jackson, and she she's very uh, heavily involved with LinkedIn, and um, how not too many creative artists are even tapping into LinkedIn. How that that can be a market to reach the CEOs and reach people to be able to speak at such conferences and at such parties. Um, I kind of feel like the divide may be uh, the perception of poetry, like I mentioned earlier, like it's, it's it's too academic, and also certain poetry uh, people know it is only for spoken word poetry, so they may not be. Too familiar with either or side so it's kind of like where do you fit and who do you call that might be the case um i thought that what are your thoughts about that like i'm thinking maybe it's the, the visual the idea of a court or the perspective maybe, maybe it's not um now it's appealing to this crowd that you know they're going to bring to this type of event like i'm trying to think of different obstacles different things maybe uh deterring it from being premier you know yeah i mean i think i think that's a great point i think but mm -hmm. i think big problem with poetry today is you see, I mean, the image of the poet is exactly what you say. I mean, it's it's like an academic who's sitting, you know, by himself or, or whatever and doesn't have really a commercial aspect to it at all. But I think, I mean, from my perspective, I think you look at music today and mm -hmm. I think whatever genre you look at, that's a great example of just the commercial appeal of something that has very poetic root to it. Um, and it doesn't matter what genre you're in, but I think that the, the way it resonates with people is all you need to know to say, you know, there is a place for it, I think, um, you know, in a very broad, um, broad appealing way. So, um, yeah, I, I just think that that hasn't fully translated. If you look at a lot of the poetry that's published today, I mean, it's probably got like one reader who, who's like an academic. 
So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I just think the type of poetry that's written and what people think of is just the academic style versus the, you know, what we see in, in music or maybe some other fields. Our, our most recent guest, um, and we were talking about this prior to recording, uh, his name is Brandon Leak, and he literally just uh, two, three days ago, just uh, got the golden buzzer on America's Got Talent as a poet, the first poet on the show, and he takes it to another level and gets the golden buzzer. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think Howie Mandel was the person that gave him the golden buzzer. That I think a lot of people have to see it for, and 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 that and that's in relation to a lot of things. You know, a lot of people just have to see it first, and they're like, "Oh, I was reading a lot of the comments um, uh, on Facebook on, on America's Got Talent's page, and they were like, you know, I'm not really a poetry and spoken word person, but he changed my mind." Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. it, I think I think because a lot of things like poetry are in their infancy, um, you kind of have to show, prove and educate um, the different ways uh, poetry or whatever else can be beneficial in in different realms. Uh, so. Yeah, but it is, it is interesting. I was just going to make a comment on that because I think, you know, one of the aspects about poetry that I think is also undervalued is the kind of like the performative aspect of it. And I think in, in spoken word and in a lot of music, you get that, which you don't really get when you read it. And yeah. I think um, I think when when you do, it comes alive in a way that that doesn't otherwise. And so in, in, it might resonate more with people. So anyway, we need to keep pushing that evidently yeah. <laughs> so that it reaches the masses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so where where do you reside right now? Where are you? Uh, I'm I'm in Denmark. Uh, in in, Denmark. in Europe. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell us about your 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 transition, your journey? How did you get to Denmark? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a question I get probably once a day. Uh, oh, like, sure. who is this one this lone American who's immigrated <laughs> into Denmark? <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's um, I had a work opportunity come up about a year ago. Like I said, I'm, I'm a consultant by day. Um, and uh, an opportunity came up for, for through work to actually move here about a year ago. And I considered it and um, I just felt like it was an opportunity I couldn't pass up. I mean, you know, how often do they offer you to move to Denmark? Right. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. So I figured, yeah, might as well. And then I actually thought, um, you know, one thing that's been really interesting about it, uh, especially because I was living in New York before, which is uh, in, in many respects, you know, a, a bit of an epicenter for creative fields um, and a lot of creative talent. And so you think to a certain extent, living in New York is going to help um, develop that, that part of your work. But I actually felt like leaving New York has been beneficial in the sense that it really gives you um, space and also gives you that kind of perspective that you don't get when you're so in, in, in a kind of just infused in, in that culture in New York. So um, that's been something that I didn't expect at all. Uh, and uh, you know, there, of course there are just other, other major differences. And then of course I moved, uh, I moved officially, I was here about a year ago, but I moved um, kind of officially in January. And so it was right before Corona. So that was a whole other, um, layer <laughs> that was added on, uh, and I had to figure out how to move my stuff out of New York and things like that. But um, but so far it's been a terrific move, and I uh, yeah no regrets. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I, I feel a little bit guilty actually that I'm not in the U.S. kind of dealing with the uh, what's happening in the U.S. You guys need to be telling me. I mean, what's happening in the U.S. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, it seems like we're going a little backwards in 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 the states. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> so. I, I think we're we were a little ambitious. Uh, to try to get back to normal, and we went a little too soon. Yeah. And um, and and on top of, you know, with the, um, the situation with social injustice. Uh, exactly. Yeah, the marches and uh, and all of that. Uh, we, they were yeah. all in one one place. With a lot of them didn't have masks on and. Um, even now, um, with Trump rallies, 
Uh, most of them didn't have masks on. And so it's. But I mean, I it's almost from all those angles that I think, you know, I now that I read the news in the U.S. and I just hear kind of like tidbits from friends and, and you know, from you guys and things. Um, sure. It's it's you see all the different angles, right? There's like a lack of leadership, I would say, in, yeah. in dealing with the corona crisis, but also exactly like you say on social injustice and all these other issues that there's just such a lack of leadership across the board. And it's it's it seems like it comes to a head anyway, or it's yeah. coming to some sort of head. Yeah, um, it's, it, it's 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 interesting, you know. Um, uh, you know, there's there's business in in movements. You know, there's business, and when it comes to uh, crises like the coronavirus, you know, and there's been a rise of poets that have really been taking charge and kind of like being the narrator um and and presenting it in a creative way uh the way people feel you know um and it's just been awesome to see that you know the pandemic has sat everybody down um the rappers the singers the the, the entertainers are like in home yeah. but the poets the poets are going off they they're they're hosting <laughs> digital open mics like every <laughs> night every morning i mean it, it's, it's just, their time it's I hope they can it. see yeah you know so it, it's like they they were they figured out how to pivot and still operate in a manner that it's like nothing really changed for them because now but actually one thing that it did that that did change was they're able to reach more people and connect with more people. So yeah. say for instance, you're a local poet or a local spoken word artist, you find an open mic that's in Africa and you present and perform. Now you can consider yourself an international poet. Yeah. You have relationships in other countries and other continents. Um, and if you were smart, you would you know, build those relationships to where when this is all over, now you can shoot an email or a DM and say, hey, I want to come out there and feature at your next open mic. Yeah. And I mean, I also think now is the time that I think you should be having a po all the poets should be writing more poetry because, I mean, it's channeling kind of an emotion um, yeah. that's heightened much more so than in kind of like average times. And so, um, I mean, I would hope to see an influx of both spoken word and poetry and all sorts of other things. So. And this is a good segue into how uh, poetry can be inserted and in, in, incorporated into business. Uh, let's take let's take the social injustice in, in all of the companies that are putting these statements out. Yeah. So we stand with and, you know, all of that. Yeah. Right, yeah. the same yeah. letter that everybody that everybody's using. Yeah. Um, what if they incorporated an actual poet to translate what they're trying to say and present it in that way? You know, uh, I mean, I think that's an incredible idea. I would love to see something like that. You yes, know, across exactly. all companies, as um, opposed to us just reading the same letter that we're saying being pushed in our face you know yeah, yeah. yeah so so i think um i think if companies would think in that way but also if poets thought in that way they can then say okay there's another lane that i can take you know as opposed to just doing open mics i can present my offering my services to companies and say you know i can be your voice yeah, exactly. I, I'm great exactly. with words and I can present it in a way that will reach that target audi audience, you know. Um, so so that's that's kind of how my mind works, you yeah. know, and, and I think um, um, uh, poets are starting to get it. And because I'm seeing some some um, PSA projects on Facebook and social media going out and um, I'm loving it. And it's, it's really awesome to see. Yeah, I mean, I would also love to see that. I mean, I, I would sign up for that in a heartbeat if I saw it in a company. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Definitely. Definitely. So, you know, with, with in, in light of 
um, you know, this 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 new uh, presentation of spoken word on America's Got Talent. Um, I man, I'm seeing so many people look at poetry in a different light. You know, they're like, I've never seen poetry presented in that way because, you know, spoken word is is well known, but it's not really known to the masses like that. You know, and so I don't know. I kind of feel like, but people really like it. I've never, I've never seen. I, I think it's impactful in a way that I don't see other um, kind of creative fields be as powerful. Yeah, the the only reason I say that is because if they really knew, then mm -hmm. they would see the value in it and see how they can incorporate it in the things that they do. Um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah. The, the the fact that that's the first. This is season 15 <laughs> for America's Got Talent. Yeah, yeah. And, and for this to be the first poet to make it through, it's not to say that there haven't been any poets that auditioned. You know, yeah. made the, the did the first audition because um, Brian, uh, I'm sorry, Brandon Leak, he tried out in 2017, um, but he did say in our, our discussion that he wasn't ready at that time, you okay. know? Yeah. So he took what he learned, uh, during that lesson, um, and, and, and just honed his skills three years later, uh, and then went at it again. And, but he knew what to expect and knew what to present. And, uh, lo and behold, he 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 made it happen, man, and uh, we're just really excited because now he goes on to the uh, to, to the live shows, and so it's not yeah. over. He continues to go on, and so more and more people will start to see, wow, that there, there is something to this poetry thing. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. I mean, I think it's terrific, um, and I I would love to see more of it. Like I said, I think. Um, you know, I, I think the big problem with poetry is it's just the content itself. It doesn't really feel accessible. So, you know, in spoken mm -hmm. word or any, if you have any kind of written, um, just any kind of poetry really that just has content that is just more uh, like understandable. I think a lot of it is is um, just too esoteric and not yes. just comprehensible. And so, you know, you're like, what am I even reading? I don't, I don't understand it. I mean, I, yes. I, I, I'm, I read incredibly broadly and I would say, you know, I'm a very avid reader and I've been struggling with poetry like since I was yeah. five. You know, I don't fully understand it still. So. Yeah, and j Roddy, I, I know you can speak to this too. You know, um, poets also have to be uh, more flexible in their uh, presentation, in their writing. And I, and I know, you know, we'll, we'll get the poets that, you know, but this is the way I feel, this is how I write. You know, but I think it really depends on um, what you want to do with your poetry. Do you want to do this as a career or do you want to just, you know, present your feelings? And e both are great. But if you want to do this as a career, you you have to learn how to um, uh, present it as a as a commission, uh, commission po uh, poem. Right. To where. All right. This is this company, uh, just like a singer. You know, uh, um, a songwriter, I should say, a songwriter writes for singers that have these audiences. And can you be flexible enough to uh, write a song that works for Beyonce or works for whoever else that might be super different? Right. So I think it's important for um, and it's an it's a responsibility also for the professional poet that is looking for poetry to be their career to um, learn how to be flexible in the way they write. Yeah, I definitely think that's uh, that's key because I know oftentimes poets would say, well, this is just this is what I always talk about is what I do. And right. I think, like sometimes it, it is too incomprehensible when it comes to um, just some of the terms, some of the vernacular, some of the like the context. It can be out, you know, out of touch for a, a, a lot of audiences. That's what one thing that Brandon did say. He said, um, they asked him, okay, what else do you got? He did another one. What else you got? Right. Another one. It's okay. Okay. You, it's, it's more than one trick pony, basically. So I think um that has to be the mentality, like you yeah, mentioned, like with songwriters, they're able to write songs for different artists and the versatile with their pen. Uh, it's similar to how poets can be or should be 
when it comes to um, wanting to level up and reach the next part of being on that pedestal or being the speaker for a feature poet or the one that's going to be at the award show presenting this and that. So it all it goes back to the pen of the poets, I, I think, as well. Well, like you said, what do you want to do and how do you want to approach it? Um, one thing that comes to mind, I guess, like an uh, open question as far as marketability, how, how can poets even market their their poems to 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 shop around to businesses on that level to shop around to the ceos um i know linkedin is a good platform but just to get a real uh like maybe like right now things are so slow with covid we can't really do too much as far as going outside how can a poet even reach out to that big business and say hey, that this, this is what i do this is where i am um listen to my work you know like how can it make them so more marketable yeah, and I mean, I mean, one thing that I will say is um, I, and this goes back to the earlier point as well in terms of um, just, I think you really have to think about the kind of the economics of poetry. I mean, I, a lot of uh, artists, I think, want to disentangle their, their creative pursuit from uh, the economics and the business side of it, but I don't think you can. I mean, you have to be able to say, like you said, that there's an audience for it. You know, what is the demand for what I'm creating? I mean, you're you're technically supplying, right? And you have to be supplying someone with this, uh, with with whatever creative outlet or pursuit that you're you're going with. So you ha and and I think the platform, um, the marketability of it is that's where you're really trying to test. Uh, it, you know, is there an audience for it? Is there any kind of demand for my writing? And it's not to say that. You know, you might get one page view or one hit or no no hits, and that's also fine. But I think you have to you have to have that kind of feedback loop present yeah. uh, always because I mean, of course, you know, if you're writing for yourself, that that could also be um, you know a possibility. But I think if you are writing and, and you'd hope to make it a career one day, you have to have that at, at front of mind always. Um, yeah. Sort of like what are the economics of it? Because otherwise, you're never going to be able to find an audience for, for whatever you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You, you really have to be one teachable, um, and accept criticism. Um, but also, yeah. especially if you are offering your poetry as a service, if you're yeah, exactly. offering your poetry as a service, then the customer says, this is what I'm looking for. And if you're not open to, writing uh for what i'm open for 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 what i need it's just not going to work period it's just not going to work and so you know um um you have to go in knowing that um and because if you don't then but there is a niche there is a niche for for people who just love people's um uh their their writing they love people's writing you know and yeah. And so write books, write yeah. books and put it out there and use social media hard and work, work, work. But in relation to poetry and business, most times um, it's it's on the level of, you know, can you can you translate our mission with your poetry? Can you translate our, uh, you know, the message that we're trying to get across with your poetry? And if you can't, it's just not, it's just not going to work for either one of us, you know? So um, it, it's, I think it's a give and take on both sides, um, but it's more so on the poet side because you're the one offering the service. Yeah. yeah. But it's interesting actually, because I think, you know, on the, which platform do you use today, especially when there are so many platforms and which one is mm -hmm. right for you? I think to a certain extent, you definitely want to think, for example, you know, LinkedIn is going to have more of a business minded right. mentality than, than let's say Facebook or something else. But at the same time, I also think you should probably, I mean, as a poet, you should probably find whatever's easiest for you to actually continue to produce because if you find something that's complicated and you don't like using it. I mean, you're probably going to stop writing. Right. Um, and I think, I don't know. I think in terms of a platform, I, it's true because you do kind of segment within the platforms of the customers that you get, you know, the types of readers. But at the same time, I, I kind of think you just have to you just have to do something that's sustainable more than anything else. Um, otherwise, you just stop writing. So let me ask you, um, Stephanie, what 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 uh, what pushed you to or what inspired you to write that article? Oh, uh, yeah, I I. You know, I working in I've been working in business now for about like over 10 years now. And I one of the big things that I have always seen was that there, you know, you're either 
put into a category of your business person or you're like an artist or, you know, in, in the creative fields, but you could kind of never be both. And I think that was um, a bit of a frustration in my mind because I felt like it was a bit of a shame to, to have that, that um, kind of disparity because I don't think it's true, right? I think the, the best business leaders, if you look at Steve Jobs or any of them, mm. are the ones that have that crossover. Um, and I don't think there's enough of a push in the academic institutions, like any of the educational institutions or um, just how business is conducted today. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was that was the inception of the article, but I mean, I feel it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. no, I understand. Look, well, let me ask you, um, when you did your research, uh, was it difficult to, find information that kind of you know proved your point or helped you out with your with your your goal there um a little bit i mean i wouldn't say it's it's something that uh probably a lot of people in business share i i don't think it's a commonly held um thought just because sure. i mean business-minded people tend to be very utilitarian um in nature so you know it's, it's kind of what am i going to get out of reading poetry and right. the answer is very difficult to quantify it's very difficult mm -hmm. to say if you read this book you're now going to be successful versus you know seven habits of highly effective people you can point to these seven habits and say am i doing this habit on a daily basis so that's um, good yeah it's just very i think it's very different but i don't think it's a commonly held belief at all sure um, that people should be reading poetry in business yeah you you asked the question um is there science in poetry yeah. Where'd that question come from? Well, you know, I think it's just the question of um, it's it's more a question in my mind of can can you find a utility in in poetry? Mm -hmm. Exactly to what I was just referring to. Right. Is like I, I think a lot of people see poetry as like this kind of random activity that they would do on the side, maybe a hobby. Um, right. You know, I don't know. They see it as like say, something that you can use in, in a romantic setting or, or however you want to put it. Um, but no one ever sees poetry as, as sort of a way to advance your career. But I think you had made, you made this point earlier around, I think it has a huge influence in terms of eloquence and uh, speech and things like that. And yeah. um, I think that's that's really undervalued. So I, I was looking at it more from a utility angle, I think. Uh, like, what do you really get out of poetry? Got like, it. Can we make it scientific in nature? Got you, got you. You know, I just thought of um, another way in poetry. Um, that could work in business. And that is yeah. uh, when you're, when an employer is doing a training on sensitivity, whatever, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. sensitivity, whether yeah. it's sexual harassment or racial or whatever it might be, um, that uh, uh, poetry would be a great device in, in getting people to start to think about um, that sensitivity, right? Uh, because, you know, a lot of the sensitive sensitivity training is just formality, yeah. you know, and not yeah. really to get the employee to really think it's, it's you, you're doing the training because you were told you had to do the training, you know, but if you were really to, uh, if you really wanted to have some change in the office, uh, it would be a great way to get people to start thinking um, and presenting uh, change in behavior uh, because you really have to, when you're writing poetry, you have to think, you have to think of, of, of a creative way to get your point of point across, you know, and, and we do that at um, uh, Poet Life Academy where we teach kids. Um, some have behavior, behavioral issues. And so when they start to, uh, do the things that we taught them as far as poetic devices, they are then thinking of different ways to say something. Mm -hmm. um, but by them doing that, they're internalizing the things that they did or thinking yeah. about doing, you know? And so I think that's a great way as well to incorporate poetry into business. Yeah, or even, I mean, I think this goes back also to the earlier idea you had, where I think having poets come in to, to sort of explain just sort of issues that are going on in the workforce in general nature, anything that's like a motive, I think, you know, it's really communicating that emotion to an audience where they have, I mean, you, if you don't experience it, I think it can be difficult to really empathize with it. And I think poetry is a great outlet to, to help people do that. Definitely, definitely. Do you write as well? I mean, I know you're a writer, but uh, do you do you write poetry at all? 
Um, I've definitely, uh, I've tried. I wouldn't say successfully, no. <laughs> uh, I, I, I like poetry in the sense that I, I like words a lot. So, you know, I, I try to kind of see things, that how it fits together. I've never tried it kind of in a commercial sense. Um, but, uh, but absolutely, I mean, you know, I don't think, I don't think you can not, I don't think you can be interested in language and not, not read poetry to a certain extent. It doesn't mean you have to read, you know, like the Shakespeare sonnets, but, um, but I don't know. I mean, you, do you, do you guys both write? It's, I mean, it sounds like you do. But. Yeah. So I'm a, it, it's, um, different titles to it. Uh, um, and that's a page poet. Uh, you know, I, I write. I'm not familiar with that. What is that? So I, I'm more of a um, literary poet to where um, I'm not so much a performance poet. Okay. Yeah, I, I've I've tried it. Um, I can do it, but I don't have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, uh, when when I was a kid, I got frustrated because. I knew I loved writing poetry, but I knew that I did not like performing poetry. And so I was like, all right, so how do I get my art yeah. out there? How, right? Yeah. And my father said, well, uh, let's think creatively. What if you uh, partnered with people who love being on stage, actors and actresses? What if you mesh the two, your passion for writing and their passion for the stage and the lights and did poetic performances. I was like, whoa. <laughs> so, and, and, and I do that and it works for me. Um, um, and, and it's just been working ever since. And so um, and that's how I know um, that I, I have a gift of writing in other people's voices and personalities. Like I can okay. literally write a poem um, in first person as as a as a as a woman. You mm -hmm. know, by me just having a conversation with that person um, and and them giving me their perspective, I can actually write in that way. Um, so so you know, I have a goal to put on a stage play. Um, where, you know, the stage plays that have, uh, all of a sudden they start singing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in this stage play, and I'm telling everybody my idea, but anyway, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> in this stage play, it's more so they won't be singing. They'll seamlessly transition into a spoken word poem. Okay. Yeah. Ah, I think that would be a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's where you I am. got to go do it. I, I, I'm it, it? for sure, definitely. <laughs> Jay Rodney, what about you, sir? You, I know you're more so a, a spoken word. Um, I think you're on mute too. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so you know, I started off as as writing poetry, then started to perform poetry. Uh, maybe like ten years ago, been doing that for the past ten years, and um, in between time, wrote wrote a few books. So yeah, I, I write a little bit. I try, I try to play play both lanes. Um. A little bit. Like a, I mean, you wrote some books. Uh, uh, exactly. You know, he's a little, like little, like little, little humble. Trying to do that. My main thing is like I, I, I want to work, uh, work on like how to, how to reach the next generation to get their, their love and inspiration for poetry to be um larger than mine's and my generation was because I think uh they can take it a lot further and they can actually get us to that point and we can get it there as far as getting poetry on a, on a higher level. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of like what I want to do with poetry ultimately. But I mean, what do you guys find in like the, or what do you think the meaning or the value is in poetry? Because I think that's what I, I feel like a lot of people don't really understand that or don't really maybe fully get it. I, I look at like uh, I look at like philosophy in a way. It's kind of like you wanna you're asking a question and, and finding an answer, and um, you're, you're using metaphors and similes and your creativity to try to like paint a picture so that people can can kind of see the point you want to make or the the actual theme you want to try to convey. Um, so I think like poetry is like providing an answers to a certain question they may not be able to have because uh, it forces you to think outside the box to prove that point, you know? So that's what I think poetry should do. Yeah, for me, it's more so like um, a translation, you know? Um, you know, there's there's other languages. I think poetry is a language, you know, and, and um, and it, and it's 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 a creative way to say things, 
Um, a lot of times, you know, you can fall asleep just off of someone just speaking regularly, you know, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if, and that's what a lot of companies are that, um, uh, they're looking for and they need is, um, in, incorporation of creativity. Um, and that's why there, there's a need for copywriters because they know how to write a good caption for a picture or, uh, um, you know, uh, just writing for brochures and websites and things of that nature. And so it's, it's almost on the same level as a poet. If the poet is open enough to um, broaden the way they write and not just write for themselves, that's, I think that's the hard part for a lot of poets, you know, is to not get away from it, but learn how to get to writing um, for others. Um, and, and even if it's not for uh, a company or, or an organization, even if it's for someone's wedding, you know, I know you write poetry, you know, would you write me a poem for my wedding or even cause I've written poems for man, every funeral that I've been to, uh, family wise, I've written and, uh, performed the poem at their funeral. Like mm. I literally just thought of that. Um, and so, so, uh, but if I, if I, if I said, you know, I only write for myself, then I wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah. But I think both of what you guys are saying, I mean, there's a huge need for that, you know, because I mean, you yeah. look at business, anyone in business. And I think, I mean, no one can really, the people who are most successful are the ones who can really distill a very complicated idea in a very, yes. um, kind of, uh, smaller, uh, more more compact nutshell, whether it's like using metaphor or simile or whatever it may be. And I think um, it's just so underutilized from what I, you know, see yeah. in the business world. So, I mean, you guys should be doing that on here. You should giving giving examples to the people. Well, you know, and that's and that's funny and funny that you say that. That's that's exactly what we do. Um, we we bring on um, poets that are achieving uh, out of the box things in the poetry industry, you know, yeah. like, like I yeah. said, our most recent is Brandon Lee. He just got the golden buzzer on America's Got Talent. He made history prior to that. Um, one of our, um, and you guys that, trained him. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's had a lot of practice, you know, <laughs> but one of our guests learned, learned how to use TikTok to go viral using poetry. Oh, really? See, that's a really interesting example, and yeah. that's really commercial. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, TikTok is a lot of dances and challenges. And I mean, I have no idea how to use TikTok, so I don't either. <laughs> but you know, he studied it. He studied uh, what TikTok was, and he said, "Oh, so there aren't a lot of poets on TikTok." I see. I can be the only poet when they do a search for poetry, and I pop He's up like every time. Poet, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's super smart. That's yeah. Super smart. So he reverse engineered TikTok and and kind of made it you know work for him. So, um, but it's a, it's in the same vein for for LinkedIn because uh, Miss Jackson she said because LinkedIn is so starch and so shirt and tie. You know, in mm -hmm. resume, uh, well, a lot of people look at LinkedIn as their digital resume. Yeah. I mean, you know? I am very guilty of that as well. Yeah, so. me too. Me too. She So she taught us a lot. You know, I was yeah. writing, my whole notebook was just, yeah. was and she was saying that if you, well, the thing is, you're a professional poet, right? And I was like, I was like, yeah. She was like, well, the professionals who are the decision makers and who have money are on LinkedIn. Why aren't mm -hmm. you, why aren't you on there? I was like, wow, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think of it like that. No, no, definitely not. Definitely yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, put, uh, Roscoe too. Roscoe got his, got his work on um, Amazon Prime. Right. Uh, Our first yeah. guest this season yeah. got his stand up uh, poetry special on Amazon Prime. First poet. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's very difficult. I mean, you're the one, you publish books in poetry. I mean, that's, that's one of the toughest fields, I think, to, to write any books on. Um, so, I mean, that, in a, like creating a business in that, in and of itself, is difficult. Um, I mean, and here you are, you're just like, all these books later, and you're like, oh, you know, I write a little bit. It's, uh, 
Yeah, I just it's just something I do on the side as well because you got you got to remember that uh, do, sometimes creative artists uh, won't have like you got to have some sustain. Like yes, you said it earlier, you have some to sustain. The day don't quit your day job basically until you know that you're just about this. So it's yeah. a lot of day job. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's also important i think it's an important uh it's an important aspect of it because even some of the most successful writers i know today you know it's it's not to say that they're commercially viable in a, in a business in and of itself you know without sort of like a second career to support it so it's definitely it's definitely a very difficult business to sustain um commercially no yeah. question yeah. um yeah i think the biggest thing once people start to um learn um, how it's beneficial, then it will be, you know, yeah. you know, it's, it's like the value of a dollar. And if we, if we all just said there's no value in the dollar, there won't be, right. you know what I mean? So, so at the very least, um, poets need to know that there's value in poetry, you know? Yeah. And so, so with that mindset, they'll then start to think creatively and, and say, hey, I can start a podcast like we're doing mm -hmm. because there's no money initially in podcasting, but ongoingly there's sp sponsors, there's, you know, uh, endorsements and things of that nature. Right. And so um, um, it's just I think it's more so of a mindset that you got to have uh, in, in knowing that it's possible. Um, and I know some people got to got to see it uh for them to know um but that's that's our job j rod d and i uh, are, are showing it you know we're bringing people on that are are doing amazing things um our plan is to have rudy francisco on and he's been on uh J what is it jimmy fallon show and the Jimmy's. yeah so so <laughs> But uh, yeah, we, we just want to kind of give that example. And I, I was really excited to find uh, your article. Um, and I was really then I was really excited that you actually, you know, respond to Twitter and uh, um, and, and, and agree to be on the podcast. Uh, it, it, you've, you've added so much value to um, what what we're presenting just to have an article on Forbes dot com to say uh, even after even to ask the question, is there a place for poetry in business um, validates the fact that there is, even the fact that there's a question for it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But I mean, I, you know, and I, I really think that it's, we can, I'm, I'm always a big advocate of speaking about it in a sort of theoretical manner. Um, yeah. But I, think, you know, when people see it and they really see how much it moves people on an emotional level, to me, that that's really the biggest impact is is once you have you've had that experience. Um, and I don't know if I mean, if either of you guys have had that experience, it sounds like you must have um, mm -hmm. would be my guess to get to where you are today. Right. Yeah. Um, I think there's always some sort of like turning point. And so I think giving giving access um, or kind of increasing access to people to re to reach them in different ways and different settings, whether it's like spoken word or written or however you want to however you want to do it. But I think. You know, I think you have to really understand it sort of on a visceral level. Uh, and then you really start to understand the meaning of it um, is, is my experience with it anyway, um, before, before it can start to have like a true impact, I think. Sure, sure. Um, but. Definitely, for sure. Stephanie, I, I really appreciate, you know, you giving of your time to, to spend with us in, while you're in Denmark. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, what time I, is it where you are? Some, uh, sorry. You, what time is it where you are? It's it's eleven eleven p.m. eleven p.m. and it yeah. is five p.m. Uh, on Friday for us. Uh, wow. Yeah. So we record on Fridays at nine p.m. and so we had to make sure that we pushed it up. <laughs> Six hours to make sure that it wasn't uh, um, three a.m. in the morning. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I mean, if we had done the three a.m. one, it would have been like then you guys could have done spoken word and everything. It would have been like we're <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, uh, that'll be the next one. That's fine. Definitely for sure. So um, um, now that you have a newfound perspective on poetry. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we would love to see, you know, your just your newfound perspective on, on, on things going forward. And um, when you get a chance, go to go to YouTube um, and Google uh, well, Google YouTube. I guess that's a verb now. Uh, YouTube. It I understood it. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Brandon Leak, um, uh, Golden Buzzer. And he'll and you'll be able to see his eight minute video of his I audition. Will. Yeah, it's, he's the it's guy. Amazing. Yeah, and it's a tear jerker too. <laughs> oh, we'll see. Well, there you go. I mean, yep. you really have to meet people. I mean, you can't write poetry about, I don't know, the carpet. I mean, maybe you can. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's like, but it's gotta be something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Makes sense. yeah but, totally. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh you've yeah, been thanks awesome. for having me. Uh, we really appreciate it. And um, J Rod, do you have anything for Miss Miss Stephanie? Now you said everything I was gonna say, man. I appreciate the just the content you were to give and just able to entertain the questions that we had and just as your input. Um, it's always eye open to have a guest. And I came in thinking one thing both for and just end up being a whole different conversation, but it's still tied to what we're gonna talk to. Um, I just appreciate just uh, the time that you gave us. I know international. It's a lot going on overseas, time-wise, so, you know, I oh. appreciate it. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. It's nice to reconnect sure, with the U.S. Sure. when I can. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yeah. We're going to let you let you get your rest since it's 11 o'clock at night. And yeah. um, uh, we're, we're just going to go outside into the sunlight on our end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, enjoy uh, it if you can, if you indeed, can get outdoors. Indeed. Uh, everybody, it's the Poet Life Podcast. Thank you all for checking us out. Subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, Poet Life TV, and check us out on our website, uh, thepoetlife.com. We also have some gear as well, uh, poetlifegear.com. And those are different ways that you can make money in poetry. <laughs> and uh, uh, but again, uh, again, check us out at the Poet Life Podcast. And Miss Stephanie Denning, thank you so much. We had a great time. Thanks, guys. Introducing the Poet Life Podcast. Go check it out today on your favorite platforms, including iTunes, Apple Music, and the website, thepoetlife.com. Find a way. Find a way. Ain't got no time now. 